Hello and welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is a Wednesday episode and today it is going to be a tutorial for the pinwheel beanie, which is a pattern that I designed. It is a free pattern on Love Crafts. If you look in the description box below, you can go down and download a free copy of the pattern if you want a written version of it. So we'll just go over briefly what the pattern, how it's composed, and then I will get started on it. Now this video is being done because someone specifically requested a tutorial on doing decreased stitches with double pointed needles. The crown of the hat is where the decreases take place and you can see they form a pinwheel shape. And this is where you would use either the magic loop method or double pointed needles in order to form the pinwheel section. So the hat is composed of the brim, which is a ribbed section here. Now it is 96 stitches all the way around, which means it gives you a little versatility as far as the ribbing. This particular hat that I have here is a one by one ribbing, but because it is 96 inches, you can do any ribbing that is a, that is a multiple of two, three, or four. So you could do a uh, two knit by one purl, so it'd be a two by one ribbing. You could also do a two by two ribbing, which would be two knit stitches and two purl stitches. This is a one by one rib stitch, which means it's knit, purl, knit, purl. So let's get started. First, we'll talk about the supplies that you're going to need. You will need some worsted weight yarn, about between 80 and 90 yards. It doesn't take much because it is a beanie style hat, although you certainly can make it bigger uh, just by making the body of the hat longer. Uh, but it does take, just to make the beanie uh, style, you will need 80 to 90 yards of a worsted weight yarn. You will need two needle sizes. You will need a size US 6, which is a four millimeter needle, and you will need a US 7, which is a 4.5. Now, if you have interchangeable needles, like these are interchangeable, I would just use two different tips and switch part way through. Um, but I'm going to use two separate needles so I can show you at the same time in the tutorial how I change from one size needle to the next. And then for doing the crown of the hat, you can either use the magic loop method or you can use DPNs, which are double pointed needles. And these are US size seven or 4.5 millimeter. Double pointed needles come in, in packs of four or five. This one I have is four because the fifth one broke. So I have a four pack needle set. So it, it will work just the same. Uh, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is our cast on. We are going to begin with the smaller size needle, which is the six millimeter. And the reason you start with a smaller needle when you are doing ribbing is because the purl stitch, when it's combined with the knit stitch, makes your, your stitches wider, wider than the regular stockinette. And when I get this close, you can see it. These stitches look bigger than here. If I did this in a seven and this in a seven, it would even be more noticeable. So traditionally on sweaters or anything where there's ribbing, the ribbing is always done with a size or two smaller of needle. So the first thing we're gonna do is a cast on. Now you can do a regular cast on, which would look like this. You have your slip, slip knot, and you knit a stitch and then place it onto there and you get two. Okay, you can do it this way, which works perfectly, perfectly fine, but it is a longer method. You are gonna be putting 96 stitches on. The other alternative is to do a long tail cast on. So let me show you how to do that. You wanna make sure that you have a good length of yarn to begin with, probably about two yards worth.
Okay, I have set aside about between two and two and a half yards. Um, that's my tail that is hanging off here. This is the tail of the yarn, and this is the end that is attached to the ball. Now I am going to put a little slip knot here, and I'm going to slide it onto a needle. Just loosely, you don't want it tight. Now, this is the strand of yarn that is coming off of the ball. This is part of the long tail. I'm going to hold this in a V shape between my fingers. And it doesn't matter which one is which, it's just you want to hold them so they're separated. Now you're going to take your thumb and turn it in and you're going to see that you've got yarn coming off of your thumb here. You're going to pick up that yarn here and then grab it where it's coming through your index finger and pull it onto the needle. So I'll do this again. There you can see the V and there you can see the yarn right here coming off. That's what you want to grab and you're grabbing it from your thumb and out. So you're going under and grabbing it and then you're grabbing it off of your index finger and pulling it through that loop that was created. And then you release it and it goes on. Again, we'll do it. Here's my thumb, tip my thumb sideways. I grab from underneath. So you can see it's hooked on my needle now. And then I tip my index finger and I grab it from there and pull it through that loop, release it and pull it. Now don't pull it tight. You wanna keep it just snug, but not tight. And it is just a lot faster method of casting on. So you can use either method and we are going to cast on 96 stitches. So you can pause the video and come back when you have your 96 stitches. I now have my 96 stitches here and I have them spread out around my uh, cable. Now this cable that I'm using is a little bit big. Um, I wish they made a 12 inch cable, but they don't. Uh, this is, I believe, a 16 inch, so it's just a hair big. But we're going to get ready to join in the round, so you want to make sure that all of your stitches, if you can see them here, this little ridge that has been formed, you wanna make sure that that, when you lay it flat, all of them are laying on the inside of the circle. That way you make sure that your, your uh, stitches are not twisted. And now we're going to join. Now I did a tutorial on this a couple weeks ago, but I will do it again. We are going to make sure your yarn is in the back. Slide the, the first and the last stitch up toward the tips. And then you're going to take the first stitch and slide it onto the right needle and take the last stitch that you did and pick it up and slip it over the top and put it onto the left needle. So you have formed a crisscross right here. And then you're going to place a stitch marker, that's the one supply I forgot to tell you you will need. If you don't have a stitch marker, a rubber band, paper clip, safety pin, anything like that will work. Um, so I'm just gonna put that on. And the only thing that is there for it lets me know the beginning of each round. So I know when I've reached this, I've gone all the way around once. So I'm now going to begin knitting and then purling because I'm doing a one by one rib. So there's my first stitch, which is a knit. and a purl. Now gone all the way around, you should have ended on a purl stitch. Um, if you didn't, then double check to make sure you knit and purled all the way around that you didn't mess up and knit two stitches or purl two stitches. And um, make sure you have 96 stitches total.
So our next row, we are going to slip our stitch marker. Like I said, it is only, its only purpose is to mark the beginning of a round. And you are going to now continue doing this rib stitch of knit purl for two and a half inches. Now you want to make sure that you knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches. Now the way you can tell a knit stitch from a purl stitch, here you can see it really well, a knit stitch has a little, a purl stitch has a tiny little bump in the front where a knit stitch does not. And you can see it right in the color. Yeah, right there you can see that this is a purl stitch and this is a purl stitch. And you can see that this knit stitch does not have that little bump in the front. So that's how you can tell. And the reason you want to have your knit stitches on top of each other is so that it forms like a ladder. It gives it elasticity so that it has a lot of stretch. Now the pattern calls for you to make this rib section two and a half inches uh, wide here. However, you can make it shorter or longer depending on what you choose. Um, this is a very versatile pattern. So if you like to have a brim that you can fold up on itself like this, you might want to make it longer. Um, or if you like the shorter ribs, uh, you can do a shorter section. But based on the pattern, we are going to continue this exact row of the knit and the purl until we have reached two and a half inches. So if you want to pause your video, and come back when you've reached that amount. We'll go to the next step, which will be transferring to the smaller needles and beginning the body of the hat. We have now completed two and a half inches of the rib stitch. So now we are ready to move on to the body portion of the hat. Uh, the decreases begin up here at the top. So we have the body portion here, and this you can make as long or short if, as you want. This is a child's hat, so it's a little bit smaller. This hat I'm making for my husband. So if you wanted even to make it a slouchy hat, you could just make the body as long as you want before you begin the decreases. The decreases are going to be just at the top or crown of the head, as you can see right here. So this portion from here to here, like I said, on a child's, this is about four inches. Um, for my husband, I'm probably going to do about six inches, and it's going to be strictly in stockinette. Now to get started, we need to decrease from 96 stitches down to 90 stitches. These are size six US needles, and we're going to switch to a US seven. Uh, as I said in the previous part of the video, because the um, ribbed stitch takes up more space than a standard stockinette stitch. So to make your stitches all look the same size, you're going to change to a larger needle now. Now, if you were using interchangeable needles like these are, if I was knitting with these, I would just simply unscrew these tips and put on the next size. But I'm going to show you, since not everybody has interchangeable needles, I'm going to show you how to transfer and do the decrease at the same time. These are US 7s and this is a US 6. Now the double pointed needles that I told you you would need come in to play right at the very end when you are doing the crown of the hat where the, the decreases go. So let's get started. All right, now to change over to a different size needle, again, this is a US 6, which is a four millimeter, and this is a US 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter. I'm gonna be knitting with both of them right now and ignoring this, this uh, needle that's in the back. So I'm using one of each, and I am going to begin at the first stitch, and I am going to knit 14 stitches. Sometimes if I just pull that a little bit out of the way, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, there is the 14th stitch. Now what I'm going to do is knit these next two stitches together, which means instead of grabbing just one, I'm just going to grab two stitches 
and I'm going to knit the stitch. So that's taken two stitches down to one stitch. So I'm now going to knit another 14. I'm going to repeat this knit 14, knit two together a total of six times. So I've done it once, 13 and 14. And again, I am going to knit the two stitches together. So I'm just going to pick up the two and do it as a regular knit stitch. But I've changed two stitches down to one. And I'm going to repeat all the way around. It should take you a total of six times. I am on the last couple of stitches before the, the um, US 6 is completely gone. So I wanted to do those with you. So there is stitch number 13, 14, and then these last two stitches together, knit together, become the 90th stitch. So you want to check at this point and make sure you have 90 stitches on your needles. So you've now decreased six stitches. You want to check to make sure you have 90 stitches on your needles at this point and replace your stitch marker so you know where your beginning is. And you have now done six decreases as well as transferred to um, larger needles. So now you are just going to be knitting in the stockinette for as large as you would like your hat to be. Like I said, this is going to be an adult hat, so I'm probably going to do about six inches. If you want a slouchy hat, you're going to do a little bit more than that. If you want a child's hat, you're going to do about four and a half to five inches. So pause the video here and come back when you finish that section and we will do the final portion, which is the uh, crown of the hat. You should now be finished the body of your hat and we are going to do the very first decrease round, which is actually, if you have an older version of this pattern, um, it, it, there's a correction in it. Um, so what we are going to do, we are going to knit two together because we need to go down to 88 stitches and the original pattern only had you decreasing once and you actually need to decrease twice. So we are going to begin by knitting two together. And then we are going to knit about halfway around. It doesn't really matter exactly when, but we're going to knit about halfway around. And then we are going to do a second knit two together. So knit about halfway around your pattern. And then we will do a knit two together. All right, I am about halfway around, so I'm going to knit two together. And now I'm going to rem now I'm going to knit the remainder back around to my beginning point. All right, we have gone all the way around and I'm going to slip my marker. And this is the second row of our decreases. And this is where the actual pinwheel begins. So you are going to knit two together. And then knit nine. And then you're going to repeat that so you will be knitting two together. And knitting nine. And you're going to repeat that, the knitting two together and knitting nine 
all the way around and when you finish you should be down at 80 stitches. All right, I have gone all the way around. I'm down to 80 stitches now. Now, it's starting to get tight. You can see I'm having to kind of wiggle. So you can either continue doing that, or you can switch to a magic loop at that point, or you can switch to double pointed needles at any time. The pattern lists to start it around row seven, but it's whatever you're more comfortable with. So I'm going to demonstrate the magic loop at this point. So I'm going to move the camera up so you can get a little bit wider angle. All right, now the magic loop usually is done with a bigger, uh, longer cord, but you can do it with these smaller. You're going to kind of find a center point of your work and just pull the cord through like that. I loop my pinky through it so I don't accidentally pull all the way through. Now, the needle that is, you want to lay your needles like this direction. Now you want to lay your needles out like this, the one with the active yarn on it is your back needle. That one you want to pull so that the cord is sticking out. This is why I have my finger on here so it doesn't pull it all the way. And then the stitches are on that front needle. I'm going to push Toward the front. Here's the loop that gives it the name, the magic loop, and I just keep, like I said, my finger in here. If I had a longer cord, it wouldn't be a big deal, but because I'm dealing with a small cord, I think this is a 16 inch cord, um, it's a little bit snugger. So I'm going to move my stitch marker and I'm going to begin by knitting two together, and this time we're going to knit two together then knit eight and you're going to repeat that all the way around. So we have knit two together and then knit eight and I will show you what happens when I get to this edge right here. So I'm going to knit two together and then knit eight. All right I've come to the last two stitches before the loop. So there it is, here's my active yarn. I'm going to turn my work so that the active yarn is once again facing the back. Make sure my finger is in the loop and then I'm going to pull that back needle through like I said, my finger is holding it in place right here. And then the needle or the yeah, and then the stitches that are on the front needle are going to be pushed forward. So now there's that loop again. So Make sure my finger's tucked into it. And I will begin knitting again. Now right where this, um, right where the space where you've looped this uh, needle around, you want to make sure that that very first stitch, you don't knit tightly, but make sure you kind of hold it close so it is snug. So you don't end up with a gap. All right, I have gone all the way around for that particular row. We're now going to turn the work again. Put my finger in the loop. Again, this is the one with the active thread. It's in the back. I'm going to pull it 
so that the cord is carrying the stitches. And I just dropped my stitch marker. There we go. Now we'll try it again. And now we are going to knit two together. Slide these stitches up. We're going to knit two together and then we're going to knit seven. And knit two together and knit seven and you're going to do that repeat all the way around I've reached the end of my loop again so I'll show you one last time in the next row we will switch over to the DPNs so I turn my work, make sure the active yarn is on the back needle, put my finger in the loop and pull that back needle so the stitches are onto the cord. And then move the stitches on the front onto the needles. All right, we have gone all the way around. Our next decrease, we are going to be switching over to DPNs. Now, some DPN sets come in sets of five, some come in sets of four. I have four because I broke one. So you always want to have one empty needle. So I'm going to actually be putting the stitches onto three of the needles. The fourth one is a working needle and that needle will rotate around. So there's a couple ways to do this. You could just simply slide your stitches, divide them out relatively evenly. It doesn't have to be any um, mathematical uh, equation here. So you just want to roughly get them evenly dispersed. You could just pick them up one at a time and slide them off like this. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to knit the next round and knit them onto the needles as I go. So the way I do this, and I am getting rid of my stitch marker at this point because it's not going to stay on. I'm going to get the stitches slid up onto the needle. This next decrease round is knit two together and then knit six. So I'm going to be knitting off of the front needle. My working yarn is in the back. I'm going to be transferring onto here. So I'm going to knit two together and I'm going to bring this yarn from the back and just wrap it right onto it. It's sort of like how we transferred stitches um, onto the different size needle. We're just transferring them now onto DPN. So there's knitting two together and then I'm going to knit six. And I'm going to knit two together and knit six. And 
So I now have 12 stitches on this needle. And I think that might be all I'm going to put on to that one. So now I'll grab another needle and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to knit two together. And here's that yarn right here. Make sure I have it snug so I don't have a gap. There's knit two together and one, two, three, four, five, six, knit two together. One, two, and I'm going to slide this. This was where my loop was here. This was where my loop ended, so I'm going to keep picking up with these stitches here by wiggling them back onto the needle. Then I'm going to pick up my third needle, and this will be the last one, and I'm going to do knit two together. And one, two, three, three, four. Five and six. Now my circular needle is completely gone. And here are my double pointed needles. So this is needle one, two, and three. Needle one is where my round begins. Now, if it does make it easier for you, you can try to either stick a stitch marker on here. It will continually fall off. So you could put a stitch marker um, just on this section, like maybe a, like a progress keeper or something right underneath here so that you know this is knit or this is needle one. You could take and just put a little mark if it's wood. You could put a little mark with a pen or something so that you know this is your beginning section or you just can kind of keep it in mind. So our next round, we are going to be using our empty needle to begin with. This empty needle will rotate around. So this needle is going to knit these stitches and then this needle will be empty. So it, it's going to alternate. So our next round is knit two together and then knit five. So we begin by knitting two together. Now you want to make sure with double pointed needles your yarn is on top that it hasn't gotten down underneath here or you're going to create a yarn over. So you want to wrap your needle and this first stitch anytime you go in between the needles you want to make sure that first stitch is not tight but snug. So there it is. Knit two together and then knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Knit two together. And knit five. One, two, three, four. And five, and now you can see that this needle is now empty. So I'm going to turn my work. I'm now working on needle number two. And I'm going to knit two together. Again, make sure that this yarn is coming from the top and not gotten caught in between the needles. 
is knit two, then knit five, one, two, three, four, five, knit two together, one, two, three, four, five, knit two together, and one, two, three, four, five. This needle is now empty and we are going to be working over to needle number three. This is the last of our needles before we begin the next repeat. So we knit two together, again making sure that we snug it between the, the needles. There's knit two together, one, two, three, four, five, knit two together, one, two, three, four, five, and our last round, knit two together, and one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we are now beginning the next row of decreases. Again, we have our empty needle. This is round. This is needle one, and you can see here the decreases right here that are caught that are beginning to form our pinwheel. And this time we are going to knit two together and then knit four. So I'm going to try to get this up close so you can see exactly what I'm doing with the double pointed needle. Okay, I'm going into just like I would with any other. Um, whether I'm using circular needles or straight needles, I'm going to knit two. I want to make sure that my yarn is up top like this. You want to make sure it's not caught in between here or anything. So you're going to bring it just like you were regular knitting. You're going to bring it in between here. It's probably going to try to get caught on this other needle. Just kind of wiggle it underneath it a little bit. So there's your first decrease, and then you're going to knit four. Again, you want to make sure your yarn is in the front. One, two, three, four. I think that's one of the biggest challenges with knitting with double pointed needles is it's very easy to do a yarn over by accident. So we'll do it again. You want to make sure your yarn is at the top where the hole is, okay? And you want to knit two together. In the middle of a in the middle of a row, it's not hard. The hardest thing is where you're changing needles. And I'll do that again in a minute. Here we go. One, two, three, four. This needle is now free. I tend to squish the stitches up so they don't come off the ends. I'm now on needle number two. And just kind of push this one out of the way a little bit if you need to. Go up through the two needle, with, go up through the two stitches. Make sure your yarn, here it is from the previous needle, there it is. Make sure it's towards where you're decreasing. You might have, like I said, you might have to hold this needle out of the way a little bit. Wrap it around the way you normally would do a stitch. 
and knit your two together. Make sure it's kind of snugged up there. And then you're going to knit four. One, two, three, and four, two, three, and four. Now we are going to decrease. This time it will be knit two together and then knit three. Knit two together. And then we have one, two, three, knit two together, one, two, three. We have now completed row eight. You should have 32 stitches on your needles total. And row nine is going to be knit two together and then knit two. So we begin with needle one. Knit two together. That completed row nine, you should have 24 stitches total. Now we're going to do, of course, knit two together, knit one all the way around. We've now completed row nine and you will have a total of 16 stitches on the needles. And then row 10 is going to be knit two together all the way around. Now that you've completed row 10, you have eight stitches left on the needles. This is, that was the final row that we do. What you're gonna do now is clip a length of your yarn, probably about six inches. And you can either use a crochet hook, you can use a um, blunt needle, or you can use one of the other knitting needles. You're going to draw the tail of this yarn first through your last stitch, so it's not going to move. So you're going to take that last stitch and your remaining tail of the yarn and put it through that loop and draw it snug. And then you are going to thread each of the remaining stitches through this loop. Like I said, you could use a blunt needle, you can use a crochet hook. I just use the knitting needle I'm working on. I've now gone all the way around and that yarn tail is drawn all the way through the remaining stitches and then I simply pull it as snug as I can pull it. I tie it off and weave the ends in. But here is the finished pinwheel beanie hat. So if you have found this tutorial helpful, um, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I will see you again on Saturday.